Well, hello, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. My name is Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie and author of We've Got Tonight, the life and times of notorious groupie, me. This is my book, although I switch up the covers every so often, there's a new cover. So if you're looking for it on Amazon, it won't be this cover. So, hope everybody's doing fantastic. Welcome back. Today we're going to do another midweek bonus episode, and today we're actually going to talk about a bunch of little bits and pieces that happened with Metallica. Because like I said, there are so many times I've hung out with them over the years that everything, it's, it's just too much. Like, what's in the book of those guys is just about this much of this much of what happened with them. So, and as I usually do with Metallica, we're going to have a stout. I'm grabbing some North Coast Old Rasputin, one of my favorite, just easy drinking stouts when I don't want a bourbon soak. Normally I do want a bourbon soak, but today we're just going to have a kickback stout because we're going to have a kickback shout. All right, so everybody grab your Old Rasputins, kick up your heels, and let's have some Rocky Talkie, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Mmm. I am a stout girl, 100%. Love me my stouts. Ooh, let's see. Let's just, how's that? Somebody see the cleavage okay? Ooh. There's not much, but you know, there's enough to fit in your mouth at least. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so okay, first thing we're gonna talk about with Metallica is there is a line in their song, nothing else matters. It says, never cared for games they played. Now I know the origin of that line because it came from Danny and I. There was a night on the Injustice Tour when they were coming into Salt Lake City. And Danny and I were getting ready. We were roommates at the time. And I called my cousin Petey. I said, hey Petey, we need some weed. You want to grab us some? Said, yeah, sure. So he went and picked it up, was dropping it off. Saw Danny and I getting ready, getting all prettied up, getting all dollies. He's all, what are you ladies doing tonight? We're like, oh, Metallica's in town. So Petey, being quick-witted like he is, turned around and was like, oh yeah, you're gonna go play the band game, are ya? <sighs> yeah. We thought that was fucking hilarious because, yeah, we kind of joked around about it all the time, you know, because that's uh, what Petey knew of us. Like, we were always going to play, hang out with some band, so that's kind of what he called it. And he just said it to our faces that day, which we thought it was hilarious. So when we went up to hang out with the boys later, we told them about that. So, oh yeah, our cousin Petey calls it the band game. And it became an inside joke. For years. And years. Mm-hmm. To the point even where one night when they were coming in from Denver and we met them at General Aviation, this is another part that I'm going to kind of throw into the more Metallica because it all kinds of lead, leads to the next story. So they were coming in from Denver. We knew the boys' schedule so well. We knew that they would be in at 2, 2.30 in the morning because they would leave right after Denver. They would have the day off in Salt a day or two off in Salt Lake City. But yeah, so we go out to General Aviation. Anybody can do this. Check the schedules, guys. This is where most bands fly into if they're on the plane. So, 2.30 in the morning, there are no other planes. None. None on that tarmac. And we've got Cammy, double cam, the friend of me, and her friend Charlotte with us. Don't know why. She'll find out in a minute. So, anyway... We see the plan. We see the band's plane land. Oh, and we go out on the tarmac. You know, we see the doors open. The guys are coming out. We run out on the tarmac. We're like, "Hey, guys!" And they're like, "Oh my God, ladies, what's going on?" And we're like, "We're coming out to see you. We knew you'd be here." And like, "No, really." So, what band are you guys coming home from? Like, they literally thought that we had just got off a plane coincidentally and just run into them because we were hanging out with another band. And even James, like, James comes, he stretches his long legs out, comes up and grabs me and hugs me. He's like, oh, yeah? He's like, yeah, who are you out playing the band game? Why are you here at the airport? We're here to meet you guys. 
Sorry, my nose keeps itching. Someone's thinking about me. So, and they literally thought like we had just, I'm like, do you see another plane out here at all? No, you don't. And we had actually been to the Marriott before to see if they had checked in yet. And the guys at the front desk are like, no, they're not going to check in until 2.30. We're like, okay, cool. So had made our way out. And we we're like, no, seriously. We were just, and the whole time, like, Danny and I got in the van with them. Cammy and uh, Charlotte got in the car and drove the car and followed us all back to the Marriott. And the whole way, they were like, no, were you girls out playing the van game? Like, they were using that as normal phrase this is something that became normal to them that was an inside joke between Danny and I that my cousin Petey came up with so the whole time we're coming from general aviation and we're talking we're catching up we haven't seen each other for a couple months whatever get to the Marriott and even the front desk guy was like, oh, you found your boys. And we were like, yeah, we did. And we're like, see, even these guys know we were here. They told us what time you guys were going to check in. So we went out to general aviation. Now, okay, okay, okay. And for years, for years. No, really, what would, tell us, you can tell us now. What band were you, what band were you coming home from that night? There was no other band. It was just Metallica. I mean, not that night. You know, we kind of reserved ourselves for Metallica mostly. <laughs> for years, they thought there was another band. But so it seems like months later and even years later on the Black Tour, this was still a phrase that we were all using amongst each other, the band game. Never cared for games they played. Hmm. Who's they exactly? don't know yeah, I do. so there's a couple little Metallica extras now okay what else do I have here god oh god oh yeah okay so when I first met James on the beginning of the Ann Justice tour and I was still real young in 88 I was just graduating high school when they first came into Salt Lake City, I've shown you guys downtown. I kind of mentioned this in my vlog about the hotels downtown, one of the first few vlogs that I did. And I showed you the gutter. And I showed you Symphony Hall where my high school prom was going on across the street. Well, we'd been hanging out with Metallica. I didn't go to my prom because Metallica was going to be in town. And in my high school, I was known as the groupie. Like, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, they have the two Pat Benatar chicks. Well, that was me and another girl, Debbie Hernandez. <laughs> but we were the groupie chicks. We were the rock chicks. So I didn't go to prom because everybody knew I hung out with bands and Metallica was going to be in town. Well, we were in Bentley's, the Marriott Bar. And James was drunk as fuck. Just fucked up. So he gets up to go to the bathroom. One of the roadies was like, hey, you need to go take care of your man. He's not doing too well tonight. Okay, so go in the bathroom. He's not in that bathroom. Not in the girls' bathroom. Go to the other bathroom on the other side of the lobby. He's not in there either. One of the valet guys is standing outside the bathroom as I'm coming out, and he's like, are you looking for James? I was like, yes. He's like, follow me. So he takes me out to the front, out the front door of the Marriott out to the sidewalk and there's James drunk as fuck just sitting on the corner couldn't get up couldn't do anything so I'm trying to get him up the valet guy goes and gets Paul the roadie and I'm while I'm waiting for him and I'm trying to talk to James and I've got I've got kind of James's arm around my waist trying to lift him up I look over and there's all the limos for my prom and everybody I know and there are a bunch of people I know from high school and they see me and they see James and they're like holy shit they're like hey Allison we're having so much fun you should come you should come come to the prom with come party with us there's gonna be hella parties blah 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 blah. And we're just screaming back and forth and James is like party it's prom time and he's like how old are you 
I'm like, you're drunk, shut up. Because like I said, they didn't know. This is a very carefully crafted secret among us how old we were. But so, Paul comes out, and you know, all my friends are still kind of standing halfway in the middle of the street, telling me I should come party with them. Come on over, come enjoy the prom. And it was really kind of a crazy metaphor, or irony, or whatever, because I could have chosen to run across the street and gotten that prom limo, never looked back and had a normal high school hood. But I didn't. I stayed on that street with the with James and the boys because that's my family. Those are the guys who have always had my back. And that moment in time was when I knew. I knew there was no turning back that I was never going to be normal. <laughs> mm. I mean, I live a relatively normal, quiet life. Unless there's a band I know in town. But other than that, you know, especially back then in the 80s, kind of Metallica, that moment with James was my defining moment. And Paul and I did get him up out of the gutter and we got him upstairs, got him to sleep and stuff. He was all right. It was all good. <sighs> Made my choice that night, really. And I don't regret it because, like I said, rock and roll's been my family. These are the guys that have had my back. None of those people in high school don't, nobody ever talks to each other anymore unless it's a family or class reunion or something. And a few people are still friends, and it's still the same bullshit from high school. So... I made the right choice. I stayed with rock and roll. Mm, still my family. But so, the Marriott, because of Metallica, would soon be history as far as rock and roll and the band staying there goes. So, like I said, the Marriott was kind of our own little riot house. This is where all the band stayed. They knew all of us. And that night that we had met the boys at General Aviation, we had Cammie and Charlotte with us. Charlotte didn't hang out with too many bands. She had dated Vinny, Vincent with Kiss and stuff like that, but that was really it. And she kind of had an attitude, which we never had attitudes. We were just having fun, minding our own business, kept things quiet as we went across the lobby, as quiet as we could, whatever, you know, kept our own selves. Well, there were some new security guards at the Seattle, or, or at Seattle. Sorry, I just looked down at my itinerary thing again, said Seattle. But there were some new security guards at the Marriott. They were assholes. We were all under the age of 21 drinking, and the security guards were getting down Charlotte's throat. And she was just pulling one of those star fucker bullshit. Don't you know who I am and who I'm with and fuck you and getting really, really mouthy. And then Cammy goes out there and she's doing the same thing. We're with the band. And we're like, oh God, shut the fuck. No, you're not. So they ended up kicking all of us girls out. Because Danny and I kind of went out with Lars to see what was going on. And Lars was going back in to grab, you know, the tour manager and stuff. And a couple of the other roadies to go handle the situation. So they ended up literally just scooping. Because they're Cammy and... and Charlotte were like, oh, we're with them, we're with them, they'll tell you. And they're like, yeah, we're all going out. So they fucking kicked us out. The don't you come back type of shit. Excuse me? I mean, like, sat us down, took Polaroids of us and everything. Mm -hmm. So, Lars comes out and he's like, where the fuck did you guys go? And we're like, the security guards told us we couldn't come back. Like, my purse is in there. And so, Lars comes out and he's starting to drag us across the lobby. And Security guards are like, no, these ladies can't be in. And he's like, well, then we won't stay here. So they were being assholes. So we walked out again. Lars and James and Ian and everybody come out. We put coats over our head, run to the elevators. Like they told Cammie and Charlotte, you're on your own. You guys go home. You created the shit. We're taking our girls with us. So Danny and I go back in with the boys. We put coats over our head. Nobody bothered us. However, they took those Polaroids and put them down in around the hotel. One of them was in the parking garage where Danny and I saw it a couple weeks later when we were going to hang out with a different band. And I kid you not, it was a Polaroid stuck to a piece of paper. There was some little kid in the parking booth giving us our ticket as we were going into underground parking. And we look over and we see our Polaroid. We're like, what the fuck? And on this piece of paper it says, these girls are banned from the hotel. 
stupid as they are, when there's another band in town, they will probably be back. Parking garage guy didn't even flinch, didn't look at that picture, gave us our tickets, let us drive off. Nobody bothered us. And nobody bothered us the whole rest of the time we were in with Metallica. They just figured they could get rid of us afterwards. And they tried to kick us out with a couple other bands. And guess what? That was the death of the Marriott. And that was a lot of money, especially back then. Because you have someone with, you know, tours with up to 100 people. You know, you could have two, three bands, 30 people working for each band or in the band or whatever, at least. So you've got 100 people every week from one thing at all. I mean, this is a huge deal that they lost because most booking agencies will book the same venues or hotels or tour bus companies or production companies, whatever. They kind of use the same over and over and over. Well, that was the death of the Marriott because of those girls mouthing off with Metallica. And Metallica never stayed there again. Most bands didn't. They started staying at um, the Monica, which I've showed you guys. For about 25 years now, 30 years now, they've stayed there. But they just stayed at other random hotels around. But never again that Marriott. Because, and, and literally, like when the guys were checking out, we went out the next morning with James and Lars because we were headed up to Seattle I think it was with them and we were checking out and didn't think anything of it you know we're just in our travel clothes t-shirt jeans sunglasses hair in a ponytail whatever and they were like ladies you gotta go and the band was like what are you talking about they're with us and they're like is this how you're gonna be because I'll tell you right now and they canceled any future stays at the Marriott on that tour they did not stay there again like I said, all the other bands, they weeded themselves out. Bye-bye, Marriott. Piss off Metallica and their groupies. You lost. So, the band game was played. And we went past go, collected $200. Oh, God. Yeah, so this is kind of all I'm looking up. And we'll get to this later. Because this is actually kind of a big thing that happened in rock and roll. I had a car wreck with him on the Injustice tour. Or not the Injustice, the Black tour a couple years later. And we'll talk about that in another vlog. But this is another thing. Like, after that happened, and we walked in. Danny and I walked a couple months later. They were back in Salt Lake City. We walk into Bentley's because they were or not Bentley's, we walked into the um, roof bar. It was down at the Hilton at the time, now it's the Sheraton. But we walked into the roof bar, and there was Lars. And he sees me walk in, and he's like, Hey, everybody! Everybody stop! Does anybody need a ride? Allison's here! Because I had gotten in a car wreck with a couple of their roadies, trying to take them to Denny's while going to meet the boys at another hotel. So... That's something they still give me shit about to this day is about this car wreck. Yeah. So if anybody thinks, you know, I'm just some tub tart, I was never a tub tart. Like those guys kept Danny and I far away from the tub tarts. We found out about the tub tarts because of our friend Shara, who you guys have already heard about in our Seattle, my Seattle the first time vlog. So we weren't those girls to them. We were a different level to them. We were family. I mean, I understand what Andorra's for all means. I understand, you know, what never cared for games they played actually does mean. It's derived from our conversations. So I'm not anonymous to these boys. And let's go back to the ABCs because again, my book was out in 2014. They released their ABC book in around 2017 to 2019, a few years after my book was read. So people can say what they want. You can be haters all you want. But what it comes down to, there is some influence of us, me and Danny with that, those boys, that you guys don't realize, but we do. And they do too because they that's how much that's how close we were with them at the time you know because 
like I said, every groupie has their band that they just love, that they adore, that they become so much a part of their history. And not just because they were in pictures, you know, that were staged and stuff with them, because we weren't taking pictures. We were actually leaving an impression in their hearts, minds, and souls, and their bodies. Yes, they, we did. And that's who we were to the boys. And there's even more stuff. Like I said, this is not the end of the Metallica vlogs. And what's in the book is only about this much compared to really what happened. Like, after the uh, Black Tour and more stuff that was happening on the Black Tour and moving to Vegas and stuff, there's more. But these are just a few little outtakes. We'll talk about Denver and the car wreck and the Black Tour and the Bermuda Triangle that was the Black Tour because there were people lost in that tour that were never seen. Yoko Ono met someone on that tour. Yoko happened. Oh, God, yeah. So there's just a few little outtakes, you know, like the boys still give me shit to this day about general aviation, although I think they realize that we really were there for them. We still joke about the band game, and Lars still gives me shit about the car wreck. So stay tuned for to hear a bunch of those and hear about Denver, because that car wreck happened another time after Danny and I came from a few days in Denver with the boys. So, all right, there you guys go. There's our midweek little bonus episode with some Metalla extras, and really what we kind of meant to the band, to the point where... We were joking around, you know, Cousin Petey came up with calling it the band game. We told the boys and never cared for games they played, ended up in a song. Tell me I don't have any tiniest little bit of influence, even subconsciously with those boys. If you think that, you don't know what really matters to those boys. All right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Don't forget... Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the bells on the way out. Let's get me out there for everybody, haters and all. Because haters, you follow me, you watch everything I do. You're not a hater, you're a fan, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you are. All right, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, hit the bells. Come on back for Sunday for some more cocktails and rocktails. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.